And now to Decision 2024 News. Vice President Kamala Harris has secured enough delegates to become the Democratic presidential nominee. That is according to DNC Chair Jamie Harrison. The Democratic National Committee won't officially announce the results until Monday night. That is when voting closes ahead of next month's Democratic National Convention in Chicago. And appears the hype for Harris's candidacy isn't dying down anytime soon. Her campaign announced a record-breaking fundraising haul of $310 million for last month. The Harris campaign says two-thirds of donations made in July came from first-time donors. This is all hot on the heels of Harris launching her campaign just, what, 11 days ago. Dive into this. We want to welcome in our NBC10 <laughs> political commentator, Sue O'Connell. Sue, at this time next week, it is likely we will know who Kamala Harris has selected as a Roddy man. I know we've talked about potential candidates. Who do you think it'll be and why? Well, Priscilla, in a field of very good options for Kamala Harris, I am sticking with Arizona Senator Mark Kelly. We talked about this before, as we just said, his qualifications. He's from a swing state, right? He's a combat Navy ve uh, veteran, and he's an astronaut. I mean, right there, isn't that appealing enough? And Kelly's good on an issue, more importantly, that is a liability for Harris, and that is the border and immigration. So if Corey were here, he would point out to me that labor doesn't exactly love Kelly, but look, every VP choice has a downside. Kelly, by the way, Priscilla, is also a twin, so I'm very excited about the parent trap opportunities of having him in the White House. Wouldn't that be a good time? Oh, boy. Jeez. Yeah, so it would trap. be. Um, Donald Trump appeared at the National Association of Black Journalists in Chicago yeah. this week. It's been making headlines, like, every single day since. It didn't go well. He attacked the moderators, three black women, and questioned Kamala Harris's ethnicity. But here's what Pete Buttigieg had to say about it. He tweeted on X, remember that all of this is a strategy. The politics of outrage and insult are the last refuge of a politician who cannot defend his own plans, unquote. So it appears here Buttigieg believes Trump's behavior at NABJ was deliberate and part of a plan. What do you make of that assessment? I think Secretary Pete is giving Trump too much credit. Look, Trump doesn't really have a plan. He's reactive. His campaign may have a plan, but Trump apparently has decided to start ignoring it. Trump should be attacking Harris on her role on issues like the southern border, crime, the economy, foreign policy, but he just can't help himself. And as to it being deliberate, though, Trump does have a history of singling out and insulting black and African-American female journalists. Yamachi Elcindo, Abby Phillip, April Ryan, all professional journalists, all black or African-American, and all have been insulted by Trump in the past. So he clearly can't help himself when he's being questioned by a black woman. So that should make uh, the debate, if he has one with Harris, very instructive for voters. Yeah, it'll be a great debate, no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to switch gears now and talk about something that really came up from the Olympics the yeah. other day. Algerian boxer Amin Khalif defeated Italian boxer Angela Carini this week. It was a match that lasted 46 seconds. Well, now Khalif has become the subject of intense bullying led by some of the most well-known people in the world. Trump, Elon Musk, J.K. Rowling, Italy's president. They all say Amin is a man who shouldn't be allowed to participate. The problem being, Amin Khalif is a natural-born woman, and it has been, uh, it can be, and it has been proven, but people aren't letting up here. What's happening? Well, as much as these haters would like Khalif to be transgender or be a transgender athlete or be what they call a biological male, she is a woman. She's never identified as anything else. There's no evidence to point in any other direction. And in fact, in Algeria, it's against the law to be trans. So the likelihood, let's put our little thinking caps on, the likelihood of a trans person representing a nation on a state-sponsored Olympic team that finds transgender people to be illegal is likely zero, right? And as much as these gender critics would love to have clear black and white definitions of male and female, the actual science says differently, right? You can have a high testosterone level, still be a woman. So why are these people continuing to attack this female athlete in the name, they say, of protecting female athletes? Well, while Khalif is 
a target now of this racism and these bully, bully um, t uh, tweets that are being directed in her way. And as you noted, they're incited by some of the most famous and wealthiest people on the planet. Absolute hateful a attacks. This should be the highlight of her athletic career, especially since she told UNICEF that she started with nothing. Her father worked as a welder in the Sahara Desert. So these very wealthy celebrities, Musk and Rowling, why haven't they apologized now, now that they've been told that she's not trans, that she's a woman? Well, simply because that would mean not only did they judge a woman unfairly, but the lie that they have been using, the lie that they are using to attack trans people in sports, saying they're doing it to support women in sports, that would be revealed, like using a veritas serum, as J.K. Rowling would say. So we'd be left with the fact that they just like to attack trans people. They're not protecting women. All right, Sue O'Connell, we appreciate your analysis tonight. Thank you so much. You can catch Sue on At Issue during the Olympics. It's airing on NECN Sunday afternoons. You can also watch At Issue on all of our digital platforms.